you could come on a drive with me in exotics like these check the description for the contest rules who knows you would be with me in a supercar hi guys and welcome to another vlog i am driving this the toyota hiace now this car comes courtesy of cl5 automotives to me so make sure to click on the pin comment and follow them on instagram anyways let's quickly open the engine bay yeah this is the engine bay no this is not the engine bay because the engine is placed right behind but this is the hood and it's very compact very small as you can see there is no hood as such which means that in terms of maneuvering this car well you need experience on an omni and you can just slice through traffic i'm just kidding look at the side and we'll talk about that later so you get a traditional halogen light you get a fog light you get the chrome treatment as well and everything is very simple in fact there is a mirror placed here so that you can see around you can see this chrome treatment here as well a lot of chrome on this vehicle wipers really nice and it's from the side you will go absolutely nuts when you look at the vehicle just look at the size it's just obnoxiously long it keeps going on and on and on and on i really don't understand why it has a side footstep there because there's no door here to open yeah you know you can probably open the windows but not the door for sure the height is so much that it's taller than me and very few cars are taller than me so that's a compliment to the highest it had adequate amount of compliant as well as bon vita so that it could grow in height i mean while well, i'm just buying time to you know read the size of the tire 225 55 17 it's kind of a low profile tire but the tire size also is very small and you can see there's a lot of space between the wheel and the body well of course soft suspension so good amount of wheel travel as well rear tires also look similar but power is actually channeled to the rear wheels on this vehicle sounds like a tractor doesn't it well we'll come to that as well again lot of vertical height here height is always vertical facet but you have a crash mechanism here like a crash guard on the bumper some sort of carbon fiber treatment which actually reduces the weight of this vehicle by around 230 grams commuter gl this is the commuter version of the toyota highest chrome treatment massive window and of course you get a mirror which is of absolute no freaking use okay let's open the tailgate OMG that is a massively long tailgate and as you can see size is something where this car absolutely excels wooden floor you can obviously recline these seats to increase the boot carrying capacity in fact i will press this button no this is actually to move the seat to increase or decrease the leg room or the boot carrying capacity but you know what i mean it's absolute genius i'm going to try and peep like that and that really doesn't work so let's close this okay 3 km is a long tailgate as well Yeah, that's closed. Everything feels solid. Roof spoiler is not a roof spoiler; it's a sky spoiler because it is actually closer to the sky. And from the other side as well, it looks better because you know what? I'm not facing against the light. But yes, chrome treatment and what not. Well, there you can see on the side as well. It's got a footstep. Why do you need a footstep on the side? You really don't because you know the height of the vehicle in terms of getting in isn't much higher. Is it in here? Highest commuter. This is the fuel rate, and all you have to do is press it like this. There, it automatically retracts. In fact, I'm quite confident that with the key as well you can open the doors. So here, I'm going to try and do that as well. But I think right now because the car is turned on, so this mechanism might not be working. But it actually should be working. Anyways, getting inside is easy because they have a scooped out, yeah, side step as well. Now, for starters, I'm going to be in the best position in the house, which means that I'm the person who's kind of the conductor who can operate the doors. So all I have to do is press this button to close it, and there. it closes as well now i have a table here so with the table activated i can keep a lot of my stuff here and work it comes with a bisleri water just in case you are thirsty and there are a lot of buttons now the audio system is placed here with a lot of controls and this is probably for the sun blind which i can't see right now so here also there are so many buttons now all of these buttons are for the lights and there are so many lights it can be a proper disco in that sense Okay let me turn this that is for the air conditioning for the audio system look at the lights it's so bright it's a disco honestly it's a disco and with the amount of space on offer remove all the seats put a bed sleep here that's what i'm going to do anyways since this has a mic i'm going to sing oh oh okay, this has turned on let me decrease the volume so i actually will do the audio test right away i think that's a movie playing on the television that's the reason why you know it's saying obnoxious things anyways lot of remotes i think this is for the samsung tv and uh, this is for the audio system this is to sing this is a mic why am i wearing a white mic with the gopro i can just wear that mic and this actually closes so lot of storage space there's a newspaper as well the storage space here as well there's a tv samsung tv there 
एंड आई थिंक दैट इज द वाई फाई ऑफ द वहीकल लाइट प्लेसमेंट दे सी इट एज अ लॉट ऑफ यू नो बटन टू एक्चुअली मूव अराउंड सो यू नो वट आई कैन एक्चुअली मेक इट रिक्लाइन लाइक दैट I can increase the under thigh support. So under thigh support isn't an issue at all. Okay, let's recline this first, and it's not going to recline unless and until I press it from both the sides. So here we go. Yeah, that's done. So lot of buttons here as well. So you know, increasing or decreasing the under thigh support is not an issue at all. So it has also got massaging. Yeah, seat massaging is available. Meanwhile, let's just walk inside and let's get to the last row. So last row is also quite spacious. So it's a three seater in the last row. There are three rows. There are actually four rows if you factor in the front row. Now there's a power socket so you can charge your laptop. Seat is actually very comfortable and you also have a tray table right there. Actually the window area is big enough so it's very comfortable a vehicle. I love the quality of seats, the cushioning, the headrest. Everything is really very nice. It's so bright inside. I need to wear glasses. I'm actually wearing glasses. So that's a very comfortable car without a doubt. and yes everybody can put their phone here watch a movie what not okay this is this brake pedal sort of a thingy yeah press this and you can move the seat ahead and behind as well that is so freaking cool and it's so effortless i can do it with one leg so increase or decrease the leg room with just a button so it's the same case here as well maybe this one's not working as fluidly yeah there's something stuck inside the rails but anyways cup holders are placed here how do we access it can you put <laughs> bottles like that no you can't but you know what this will definitely open but somehow it's not opening right now anyways as you can see there's a lot of leg room on offer the wood is uh, the floor is wooden actually <laughs> wooden flooring for that comfortable you feel so when you tap dance it's really nice again you have got space and you got space here as well there's plenty of space this has more space than my house honestly this is so much space on offer I love the fact there's so many bottle holders. In fact, that someone's put four bottles just to tell you that. Meanwhile, there's good amount of window area as well. Everything inside this vehicle is obnoxiously amazing. So much space, so much practicality. But hey, let's move this seat ahead as well. Okay, where is that brake pedal? I can't find it. Actually, the these seats are moved electronically, so that was a total flop on my part. I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna try and access the roof. So here, how does the roof open? Actually, you know, I have to push it from the side. and yeah here we go so actually you can raise this now it's risen which means that yeah it's actually for aerodynamics that's right this is for aerodynamics i'm moving all over the place inside the vehicle right now it's not a good idea to keep this up because when you do that you know what's going to happen actually this improves the headroom so you can stand and travel it's not a good idea to do that you know why because if you go and try to park the car it can be an issue but there's good amount of space what a practical car 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah. 7 8 8 8 seater here that's great anyways let's open this come on open there it goes let's get out easy to get in and out which is really very nice and let's close this as well come on close 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 press it in the wrong way always so this is closing oh wait i need to turn off the lights so who's going to pay the electricity bills so let's just open this shut all the lights for the moment because then you know electricity bill will really loom large and let's shut this i always get that wrong I always freaking get it wrong now getting on to the driver seat which seems to be the heart of the matter but before that can you see this beautiful treatment of the light so also very cool huh looks after market probably is anyways you can see the wheel is right below the driver's ass front door pockets are very slim actually this compartment is in very practical for a lot of reasons this is obviously to open the windows and this seems very much like the older innova and the fortuner i mean the dashboard actually looks very similar to the older innova and the fortuner including the steering wheel engine start stop button controls for the outside rear view mirror this is to open the door yeah right now it's not opening because i don't know for what anyway this is for the light this small amount of storage space here as well getting inside before that let me show you accelerator brake and there is this partition here and there is a massive dead pedal there why i don't understand that and below here there is a button okay this is to you know turn off power door lock this is i believe for traction control or something But when i press it not seeing anything it's just activated all the time so i don't understand that either okay this seemed to be the dummy button earlier and actually it kind of feels active meanwhile okay this is to open the fuel lid this is to open the hood let's get inside which means holding this yeah there's an antenna here holding this and jumping inside so in first and foremost i'm going to turn off the air conditioning so it obviously gets a climate control air conditioning those actually close with a solid enough thud and there's so much wood inside that a carpenter will feel at home here 
so this actually opens twin cup holders right there and there is a dummy space here i thought that was for the infotainment system but you have got a touch screen here which seems like an aftermarket unit seems quite basic let's get into reverse right away so here we are in reverse where's a reverse parking camera oh there's a reverse parking camera it gets guidelines guidelines are not adaptive you get parking sensors as well steering has no audio control steering is really very large and you can see the meter gets a speedometer in the center on the left you get the engine temperature meter on the right you get the fuel meter there's no tachometer on offer but you have a digital display which tells you the clock odometer as well as the outside temperature and over here on the left you get the gear position indicator as well these are the controls for the lights these are the controls for the wipers wipers work really well good amount of spray on offer it doesn't get an auto dimming inside your view mirror this mirror is useless any which ways there's a light placement here and month date temperature week celsius am pm alarm house notice i don't know what that is there are a million plus buttons here as well now obviously these buttons are for the lights meanwhile there's a system here i think this is for the air conditioning for the rear meanwhile there's storage space on the top as well like this good amount of storage space on the top and there's no mirror here but there seems to be a light same is the case here no mirror but there seems to be a light dashboard is really very 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 long but there's good amount of space in the center and there's an ashtray there's a 12 volt charging socket i told you air conditioning controls audio system and there is a massive glove box as well in fact there's one on the top as well dual glove boxes so very practical front seats are extremely comfortable they are wide in the center console we have a lot of storage space as well so storage storage cubby holes multiple cubby holes twin cup holders again cubby hole and you get this storage as well now this open below which you get another remote this car has 1,347 remotes and this got tape as well so this actually comes in use when you kidnap which we'll talk while driving and as you can see the car is like really long meanwhile you get adjustment only for rake not for reach you get adjustment only for the height and uh, yeah you can't move the steering ahead and behind headlight leveler is placed here the tweeters here this is the handle to hold on to but where is the sunroof but still the cabin actually feels nice and spacious which is actually a very good thing this storage space there as well there's so many storage spaces inside the cabin what was toyota even thinking they were like okay let's do one thing let's make this car a cupboard on wheels because it also looks like a cupboard anyways let's get driving right away all right we are all set to go which means turning off the air conditioning getting into drive mode there's no traction control on offer here steering is obnoxiously heavy okay difficult to do left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator but here we go as you can see this engine is very noisy indeed this is the same engine as the old fortuner so either it's a 2.5 or a 3 liter uh, which produces around 130 odd horsepower and around 280 newton meters of torque performance is slick by van standards however you know what you can feel the bulk every time you go through a corner you pray that you come out straight because there's a lot of roll through the corners you have to counter correct continuously the steering actually doesn't have much feel or feedback as such. but yes it definitely definitely isn't very heavy at lower speeds which means that this car is quite maneuverable step onto the gas and yes the diesel torque comes into play but there's no tachometer on offer so it's absolutely impossible for me to tell you where the power actually lies yeah actually there is decent amount of punch lower down through this corner all right everything is flying already all the prayers right now itself okay going 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 Should I get on the gas? Yes, I can. But you know what? <laughs> you occupy two lanes here, and the big issue is, which I already showed you in the walk around, that divider between the pedals is so stupid that you can absolutely never, ever, ever do left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, unless and until you have chicken legs like me. And talking about chicken, we just had one, right? Anyways, onto the gas. There, it picks up pace nicely and pulls good enough for a car which is so heavy, large, and obnoxiously long for reasons best known to mankind. But Doing 100 kilometers per hour isn't as tough as you would expect because it does reach there. Top speed should be in the vicinity of 130 kilometers per hour, but to reach there, you have to throw all the passengers who are sitting behind and just hope that you encounter a slope as well. So the steering is not aligned right now. But that said, I would say that the motor's noise could have been definitely lower because it does feel a little boomy for my liking. However, the ride quality is really very nice. It is cushiony. The suspension is on the softer side. So over expansion joint there is. some bumpiness which can be felt but you know toyota has done a great job in terms of overall sound insulation inside because although i can hear the motor the diesel clatter i can't hear much else but this mirror shows me absolutely nothing inside which means that i am just driving 
fingers crossed with prayers all the time because firstly i can't look there because that's 3 kilometers long like away the dashboard is like 15 kilometers long and the car itself is 45 and a half kilometers long which means that you drive this car not basis judgment but basis assumptions basis god yeah that's right <laughs> basis god but this is not a car to drive it's a car to be driven in and as far as the ride quality and comfort goes this toyota high ace is absolutely splendid every time you get enthusiastic some or the other person is going to fly off the vehicle thankfully the doors are nicely sealed it's a toyota at the end of the day so build quality is really nice 0 to 100 km per hour should take around 17 and a half seconds and overall performance isn't nothing to write home about however you've got multiple modes you can go lower down into second gear or low mode as well low mode is good for the guards of course because then it's going to give additional torque lower down just to make sure that the high ace is able to climb high ground as well so as you can see the toyota high ace is nothing but the rich man's omni or rather the rich kidnapping van but here you're just not looking at it as an expensive vehicle because remember one thing in omni the number of people you can kidnap is far lesser than how many you can kidnap in the high ace because you can see it a lot of people but when you actually kidnap high net worth individuals you can't really throw them in an omni which is just so unsafe so this car ensures that the person you kidnap is actually safe and you get your ransom now let's throw all those jokes aside as a car and specifically this is an important vehicle because toyota is planning to bring this to india or they already brought it they showcased it at the auto expo and i believe customer uh, this thing has also happened what is this actually customers have also seen the car but it's going to be priced at rupees 60 lakhs which is a lot of money which begs the question the why would you want to sit in a car for a longer time a slow car although it's very comfortable why would you want to sit in a slow car for a longer time might as well buy a faster luxury car get to your location or your destination and then sit in complete comfort and luxury of your home restaurant hotel or whatever now in spite of all this weight high speed stability is great because for the fact it doesn't reach high speeds the other good part about this car is that it has got something known as brakes okay what they do is they help you stop the vehicle right I'm going to try and do that right now but just don't stomp hard onto the pedal because if you do the 8 11 10 15 people who are sitting behind might just go ahead of you so you really have to be gradual on the brakes because if you try to brake hard obviously there's going to be some amount of nose dive and that massive center console which has all your belongings and more will fall off okay something flew off come on okay let's go now Actually shifting this does absolutely nothing right now I don't know why anyways So how do you sum up this vehicle? It's not a car to handle, of course. There's a lot of body to, there's a lot of mass, but you have to be careful. You just can't be like, okay, you know what? I want to go to the mall. No, you can't go to the mall. You have to factor in the height of this vehicle. The height is so much, there is a chance that it might scrub the roof in a mall as well. So yes, there's certain things which have to be taken care of while driving the high ace. And honestly, the driving parameter doesn't really matter at all because you're obviously going to get a chauffeur and enjoy in the rear bench. So how do you actually define this? Is this a rich man's Innova? Probably. Probably yes, but Toyota is thinking it the other way. The best-selling MPV in the Indian market right now. Okay, don't tell Artiga and all those things. That's not really MPV. That's like a Jaguar MPV. Real MPV is like probably yeah, the Kia Carnival is one. However, the Innova can also be called as sort of an MPV. It's more of a UV. Okay, that is priced roughly between 20 to 30 lakh rupees. And beyond that, if you want something really luxurious and comfortable, better than the Innova, then there is the obnoxiously priced Mercedes V-Class, the V220D. So the highest slots right in between. It's going to cost around rupees 60 lakhs when launched in the Indian market. Obviously, they're going to bring in the latest generation model, which will have slightly more bells and whistles, and and yeah, it might be safer and easier on the eyes as well because this interior kind of looks funny. But that said, you know, I'm sure many people are going to lap it up because firstly, it's a Toyota, and secondly, it's a Toyota, and thirdly, it's a Toyota. So if it's a Toyota, obviously, there are going to be a lot of buyers. Even if Toyota serves a sauce on a car right on the hood and that flies and hits the windshield every time you accelerate, people will. still buy it okay the etios did not work because that sauce wasn't tasty at all and the glanza is not going to work either no matter how much they sell right now that's it guys i firmly believe that the high ace has a market share in the indian market however toyota should really commit to it manufacture it locally position it right above the innova or probably between the innova and the fortuner share the engine share the parts and then you have a van which actually offers a lot of comfort and practicality i'm still waiting for that time when we will get real big vans in the indian market because right now none of the honda odysseys or the kia carnivals are available which is kind of disappointing because they can actually take 7 to 8 people in utmost comfort along with 
all their luggage and more now in order for me to actually turn left i have to actually rotate my complete neck to see left on the left mirror like i told you the dashboard is so long now it's obnoxiously long but there's another good thing about this car because the dashboard is so wide you get complete privacy the person sitting next to you is sitting five kilometers away from you there's no chance in hell that your shoulder is going to rub with it, the other person however there's a slight problem because we are in india there's going to be someone who's going to be sitting in between because that's how this car will become an additional seater yes power does go to the rear wheels and overall it is a heavy car but doesn't feel heavy to drive at all which is the beauty of the highest it's very car like as long as you do not look at the dimensions because the dimensions are so much it absolutely makes you worried all the time how will you park this how will you drive it in traffic what if you want to take a u-turn is there enough cornering clearance yes there is good amount of ground clearance but i wonder with the soft suspension and you know a lot of passengers on board will this car bottom out i don't think so it's a toyota 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 makes practical cars in that sense and yeah I don't know why the steering is moving that side but that said I would give the highest a big fat good rating because you know why would you buy a DC modified van just buy the highest it comes with the Toyota reliability and of course a fuel economy well which will turn out to be very positive when you divide you know the fuel cost with the number of people on board like a good you so guys this is my vlog of the Toyota highest if you liked it you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up usually when I say give it a thumbs up I stand on the accelerator standing on the accelerator here does absolutely nothing at all make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye take care see ya